Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Cisco and the Mike. This is Cisco. And this is Mike. And today we have, I'm going to say, not a special guest. It's more like a special co-host. Uh, we're doing our Mother's Day special. And at first it was just going to be me and Cisco. <laughs> and somebody made a comment about how can you have a Mother's Day special and it's just two motherfuckers, it's two motherfuckers on the show. I, I don't think that's what it was. I <laughs> think it was, was, what, How was it? How no, no, no. It? I think she's like, you can't have a Mother's Day special without a mother. If not, it's just going to be two motherfuckers. <laughs> that's true. There you go. <laughs> So she called us out, and we said, you know what? Come on the show. You're a mother, and I don't know if it's too early to say this, but you're an expectant mother. So mm -hmm. welcome, Sandra. Thank you. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me. <clears throat> um, expecting mother, that's a lot. <laughs> and, and if you hear a long pause, it could be one of two things. She's going to barf or... Yes. Yeah. Or if I get up suddenly, it's because I need to throw up. Yeah, all well, I've been hearing every time I call. Uh, by the way, she's also uh, the sound guy's wife, which is my brother. You guys know that's my brother. <laughs> um, so every time I call my brother, all I hear in the background is go, huh? Yeah. Huh? And I'm like, what the fuck's going on? It's the same thing when I call you, dick. <laughs> Instead of having a conversation, I just say, huh? <laughs> 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 all right, guys. So today we're going to talk a little bit about... Motherhood, you know, obviously we're going to talk about our moms, how we meet, or how special they are to us, and we're going to have fun. So today is not, there's nothing sp specific that we're going to talk about. We're just going to free flow today. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this, and, and happy Mother's Day to your mothers, motherfuckers. <laughs> 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 All right, Sanders, tell us a little bit about what's up, what, what's, <clears throat> what's it like being a mom? When it... Um, I can honestly say... Being pregnant this time around has fucking sucked. Has sucked. Like, I can't say anything good about it. Like, I went into this with the mindset that, like, I did this one time already. The second time I've heard is easier, and it was a lie. They lied to me. <laughs> <laughs> but you just started, so what's up? What's different? I know, and that's that's the thing, that I'm only, um, I'm only eight weeks. No. No, yeah, eight weeks, and I'm already having a really, really tough time. Like, I've been throwing up, um, feeling nauseous nonstop for, like, almost four weeks now, a whole month, a whole month. And I've been to the hospital twice Damn. for dehydration, dehydration. Well, I think that's the thing, though. I think it's, like, the first three months are the hardest, right, to get by? Yeah. Then after that, it gets a little smoother? If I'm, you can say that. But if I'm speaking honestly, I um, my first time around, I did get morning sickness, but I didn't get it this aggressive, like to the point where even just the thought of food, like makes me sick. I can't think of food. I can't. I I can't eat. I can't eat honestly. And Damn. um, there's days where I don't eat anything at all, and I know it's not healthy. But it's just so difficult to actually be like, I need to eat something because you just feel so sick and so nauseous that you, you can't bear the thought of putting something in your mouth when you're feeling super, super nauseous. Damn, that's crazy. With that being said, happy Mother's Day. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> hey, we're going to hear a lot of happy Mother's Day today, okay? So, hey, so does, has Saul, well, I'm going to call him Sound Guy because that's how everybody knows him, Sound Guy. Mm -hmm. Has Sound Guy picked up the, the, the eating part? Um, actually, no, that's another thing, too, since I haven't really been eating, I feel like he hasn't really been eating either, and it's just like, just because I'm not eating doesn't mean that you can't eat, like, you know, oh, you gotta eats. get yourself. You like, should put well, some yeah. Subway in front of him and see what he and thinks he'll about And he'll eat him. it, huh? Yeah, I heard he munches <laughs> shit in here, like, he, he comes in here and he's like, oh, shit, I'm gonna munch out before I go home, because yeah, Sandra can't eat. I, I, I don't eat, and then, um, it's just, it's been, it's been really, really hard cool really hard hey we said we're not gonna interview you so we're gonna let you control and dictate the, the pace of the show so you could you could do whatever you want as far as you know show wise mm -hmm. and if there's anything you want to like ask or you could put us on the on the limelight today you know what i'm saying you're the host but we're not mothers no but we, she could ask but us you've been around moms well, yeah we sure. got moms i think biggest thing i think is that in a sense we can all relate because we all have that mexican mom yeah. you know in a sense and there's like these, how do you say? Like creencias or? Cre creencias, expectations, and certain things like norms, I guess, 
when it comes to Mexican mothers, we all have that chunk left here. True. <laughs> <laughs> and things like that, you know, our moms being a certain way, so I think but, we can always but relate. I think it's also, I think it's different, too, though, even though we're, mm, we're all Mexican here, or Hispanic, or Latino, or Latinx, whatever you guys want to call yourselves. <laughs> um, even though you're a Mexican and I'm Mexican and we grew up in, in a pretty Mexican household, it's still different. Oh, of course. Because you're only your only son, if you're one of you know two kids. I'm one of many sons, and I'm the oldest. You're the oldest, but you have a different. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't know if it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I, of course. I'm assuming the relationship between you and your mom is way different than the relationship between me, my brothers, and my mom. Well, I think even even if you're an only child, it just depends on how close you are with your mom and certain things, That's obviously. True. So everybody, regardless, yeah, I could be someone else that has two kids too, and. Their relationship is different. That's true. So everybody's experience is different. You know, that's what we've always talked about on the show is everybody has similarities, the way you grew up, certain things, but everybody's experience is different. That's true. So that's you true. only have a sister? Yeah. Mm-hmm. A younger sister. How much younger? Uh, well, she's seven years younger than me. Oh, seven wow. Years that's a pretty big yeah. gap. Yeah. Damn, fool. Do you guys get along? Yeah, we do. Yeah? We actually do. So that's we're good. we're fortunate. I know a lot of people always say that. They don't really get along because of the age gap or anything. I was actually a little bit of a protective brother. Mm. I was ratting her out all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, you're one of I those. Was, <laughs> I was like, she was in high school. I was in high, out of high school already. I was like, like, mom, she ain't going. She ain't going to her friend's house. What the fuck? That's because you did it. She's huh? gonna, she's gonna be like, I'm going to sleep over and underneath her pajamas. She had clothes on. I was like, nah. I already know what's what going a, on what here. A rata, huh? <laughs> hey, what that, a rata, huh? Hey, So you, hey, do you consider yourself a mama's boyfriend? In a sense, yeah. 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 I do. Cool. Not a lot of people could admit to that. I don't know, but, um, you know, obviously, I know we've all been blessed to have great women around us, and, I mean, why not accept that, you know? True, true. So. I, I don't think I'm a mom's boy. Um, I mean, I've heard you. The silence Ama. is loud. <laughs> huh? Ama. The silence is very loud. <laughs> have you heard him? Ama. Ama. <laughs> no, uh, I'll be honest, okay? So, maybe I'm a mama's boy, because, uh, Growing up with, with four brothers and a sister, um, you know, things things were a little rough with me and my dad growing up. And so my mom picked up a lot of the, the slack for my dad, with me at least. Yeah. And so I've always seen my mom in that role where she's like, sex ed? I didn't get that shit from my dad. I got that shit from my mom. I you didn't know, even I get it job. at all. You didn't get it at all? <laughs> no <laughs> wonder, fool. You're not experienced. <laughs> Uh, he don't know how to use that shit. Uh, no, my mom My mom would always talk to me, you know. My mom understood the dynamics and the relationship between me and my dad. Mm-hmm. So my mom, like, to me, my mom was my mom and my dad. Yeah, she had to give you enough bo- enough love for the both of them. Exactly. So i am always be grateful for that because if it wasn't for that, I, I don't know what I'd I don't know what I'd be doing or, you know, where I'd where be Where you'd at. be. Yeah. I mean, I, obviously, everybody knew. Everybody that knows me, actually, from... My background, even in Cisco. Um, yeah, and I, I think, think that's one thing that we have in common a lot, that our moms were like the strong yeah. figure in, in our families, the ones that kind of gave us that protection and then that love at the same time. So And that hard, sh- like, like they were fucking firm firm yeah. and shit. So, you know, I don't know I don't know how it's like to, to for a girl and a mom because I, I, can't, I can't speak on that. I don't know the, rela- the dynamics of the relationship between a mom and a, and a daughter. Um... I think now that I'm older, mine and my mom's relationship is a lot better. Mm -hmm. But in the past, it was bad. Um, I've actually gotten down twice with my mom. Damn. Like, down, down? Like, Mm -hmm. Like or like DJ Quick, we're going down, down. down, down. (laughs) No, I've actually gotten in in two fights with my mom on separate occasions. And I'm not proud of it, you know, like when I look back, like I'm like, fuck, I was so stupid. Like, how could I do something like that? You know, like that I have my daughter now, like I think about it and I feel dumb for it. But, you know, my my mom had her flaws, too. She had her flaws. I love her to death, but she had her flaws um, at the same time. You know, she didn't get the love that she she should have gotten from her mom. So I feel like she was just doing the best that she could with the knowledge that she learned on her own. It's the only thing they know sometimes. Yeah. They don't know other ways. Yeah, of course. And, you know, on on my end now being a mom, I see it like 
she did her best. She did what she could. And I'm not saying like, oh, I don't want to be like her, but there's a, there's a lot of things that I would do different now that I have my kid. Like showing love, physical love, is like a main thing for me. Like I make sure that I tell her that I love her, that I hug her, and that I kiss her. Because, you know, kids need that. Are, are you a firm believer in, in, I don't know if your mom said this or your mom said this. Um, my mom would always tell me, you know, because I was kind of a fuck up little kid. I was a little desmadroso. As a little kid or? <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I've always been the, a black, the black sheep of the family in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, my mom would always tell me, especially when it came down to like mother and, and, and kids things, she would always tell me, vas a, vas a ver, cuando tengas hijos los vas a pagar. Yeah. So that shit always stuck on me, right? And I was like, nah. it all depends on how I raise them. But I think I, I'm a better, I'm not saying that my mom didn't raise me right, but I think my kids are growing up in a different environment where they're not experiencing the shit that I experienced, uh, like, you know, poverty or or violence or whatever, right? And I'm trying to give them the best that can be, and I'm trying to raise them the best that can be. I'm, I'm actually, I was, obviously I'm educated. My mom was not educated. So I try to like you know I, I try to teach them things not just on an educational level but as a on a personal and, and, and living level. Yeah. And I feel like I'm there's shit that my kids do that my mom was right. They're gonna they're gonna I'm gonna pay. Yeah. But so but those are indirect traits that they pick up. I think. You think so? Yeah. I mean, there are certain things because think about. I mean, you're right. Like uh, the generation thing is different. Mm-hmm. Raising kids now is different than when we were raised. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously the education of our parents, things like that. But I think kids are more self-aware now, too. Gotcha. Yeah, definitely. I think, like, you've brought this up. I think they have the world at their fingertips with the Internet. Mm-hmm. And just the emotional awareness, it's way different on a different scale. Yeah. So I think, like you talked about, I think we've gotten smarter. We're more in tune to, like, like you said, you know, loving, feeling, showing them and things like that. So I think that's part of it. Gotcha. But I still think that they're self-aware about the traits, too. Mm. Like, yeah. even though you don't think they're paying attention, I think they are, you know? Most definitely, yeah, they are. I have a five-year-old who who calls me out on shit. Like, there's times where, <laughs> like, um, I'm angry, you know, and it's not, like, her that makes me angry. I'm just mad at something. And then later on, she'll tell me, like, straight up, like, she'll be like, Mommy, I didn't like how you yelled at me today. It hurt my feelings. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what, baby? You're right. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done that. And I'm like, I, I'll, I'll be better, okay? And she'll be like, okay. But, like, she'll literally call me out on shit. And it's like, fuck. Like, you're, you're right. I wasn't, I, I shouldn't have done that. But, I mean, a five-year-old to come and tell you that shit, like, it, it's like, now, fuck. What would, you, what would your mom have done if you have done what your daughter did oh, to her? <sighs> Probably tell me to shut up. <laughs> I don't know. Tell me, vete la chingada. Me vale madre. You know, it's... I, I, I like that she tells me, though, you know, because that gives me, um, what do you call it? It, it? it lets me know that I'm emotionally available for her, mm-hmm. that she has um, enough courage and she's not afraid to tell me that, like, you were mean today. And it's like, you're right. Like, you know, there's, there's, there should be a fine line of when your kid can call you out on something. Because if you're fucking up, like, you're fucking up. And I think that was one thing that my mom and me didn't get along because I called her out on all her shit. Like, I would tell her how it was, and none of my siblings would do that. And I have six. So none of them would do it, and I was the only one. So I think that's why we bumped heads. But I think it's also different. I think, like, I've been a certain way. I think, like, in my family, I've been the one that's been pretty straightforward with a lot of things. When I call my, like, my sister and my mom, when I used to call my dad, things like that. And they don't see it. Like, now I feel like, now that my dad passed, I'm more like the protector of the family, and they look to me now because I'm the one that does that. Mm-hmm. And I think when it comes to, like, a daughter, I think part of it is because she's kind of sees her experiences maybe through you as well. You know, maybe, she, like you said, she was a certain way. Maybe she sees that you were like that too, or you were, like, straightforward. And that's why you guys butted heads because you guys were very similar yeah. In an unsimilar way. Yeah. I can definitely say that sometimes when I do get angry or when I don't think before I speak, I see my mom. Um, and, and not that I don't like being compared to her, but it's just 
sometimes it's like, fuck. That was a very Maria thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> That's my mom's name, too. Yeah, Me- name. Mexican name. Mexican my mom's mom. name is Maria, too. <laughs> and mine and your mom's birthday is on the same day. Damn, I think that's crazy. I 75% of uh, people's moms are named Maria. Yeah. In, in the Mexican, in the Mexican, in the Mexican. Uh, culture or the Mexican house. I think, yeah, Maria. And then dads are Jesus. My dad was Jesus. Mm-hmm. I don't know. My dad was Ruben. Yeah, but your dad's second generation. Sure. I don't know, right? So... Is he, he stopped that. He broke that shit off a long time ago. Mm. Um, I was going to say, oh, yeah, I was going to say, um, the one thing that I found weird now, you know, as a parent, obviously with my mom, is how they would, we, since we were talking about them telling us shit about, like, Beta la chingada, what, what would your mom have said if you, if you, if you would have told her what your daughter told you? But it's weird because when it comes to grandkids, they're different. Oh, pff, yes. It's sure. fucking funny because they'll tell you to go fuck off, but the grandkids, it's like, it's a whole other level. Yeah. They yeah. treat grandkids like, whoa, what the fuck? Is that a cultural thing? Is that like a cultural thing? Like, because it's pretty common, dude. Like, you know, yeah. you see like. Like, the, the kid, can do, kid, kid can do no wrong. Yeah. You, you know, your kid is acting out the way you did to her, and she, you're calling her out the way. You're, look, you're almost looking at your mom like, see, mom, I'm going to call her out like you did. <laughs> and then they're looking at you like, you're ay, being Ay, déjala. Déjala. Uh-huh. Ven pa' acá, mija. Ven uh-huh. pa' acá, mijo. No te creas de tu papá. Yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck? They become the protectors and shit. Like, where was this mom when I was small, damn it? Oh, she's still there. But she just doesn't do it to the kids, to the grandkids. Yeah. You still get it every now and then. So, I don't know. I think that's funny. That's one of the funny things. That, that is true. So... Do we have any monsters? Do we have any similarities? Did your guys' mom use the chancla? Of course. Yes. Chancla. Chancla, I, I the, the cinto. Is, uh, the cinto, the fajo, yeah. Yeah. I got that, too. You know, it's crazy. At some point, even when I was older, it was weird because when I did something wrong, me and my sister both got her ass whooped. When my sister did something wrong, same thing, right? And I was like, I always wondered why. And then she always said, para que sea parejo. It's like warning you so you don't do the same shit. <laughs> you learn the lesson, you know? And at some point, when my sister would mess up, I already knew, fool. So I'd start running to the room. Yeah. Mom will freaking grab the chunk line, boom, 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 hit me in the back of the... Did you ever, have you ever <laughs> fake cried to your mom when, when it was, she was hitting you? I tried if I couldn't, because she would hit me until we cry, you know, like... So you would actually, she would beat you until you And cry. then you start fake crying. Or... Oh, I fucking and, learned how to fake cry. And, you know, and you, know, you know what's funny? And then when you're really crying, Oh, quieres llorar? Yo tengo una razón para que llores. That's the worst. Or they do that, that shit where they're like, Ves a agarrarme el cinto. Like, what yeah, they the make fuck? you go get like, the shit that they're going to whoop you with. Why do I have to go get that shit? Like, you're going to hit me with it. Why am I going to yeah. bring it to you? Damn. Ves a agarrarlo. Ves a agarrarlo. Then you go all crying, going to go get like, that fuck, shit. You, you know this is about to whoop your ass. You, you guys were playing it. checkers, dog. I was playing chess. I'll be like, okay. And then I go and I just go lock myself in the room. No. <laughs> oh, we, we, dog, that should be worse. Dog, yeah. that gives you the time. Nah, that should be worse. You, you know, there, was, there was one time where I grabbed the pillow to like cover myself and that was like the worst thing mm. I could have done like she was like baja la almohada like she was so mad and I was like you're gonna hit me like <laughs> why am I gonna put it down dude my mom I pissed on my mom once actually I got out of an ass whooping once um because you negotiated your way out of it or no check this out it just was fucking funny so I already knew you know my mom my mom will get my mom will do I'm not gonna make the face but when my mom would get angry, like when we'd be outside in, the, in, the, in public, she, you could tell her she was going to whoop your ass when you got home because she'd talk to you a certain way. And I'm pretty sure you, you probably heard I've her. Seen it. You've seen it and heard her. She, she starts enunciating shit, you know? Right? Like, um, she used to play loteria with, uh, with my, my tias and everybody. And one time I called her out on it. She, uh, she, they were playing loteria, and I, I lost my money. And I wanted more money, and she was like, no, you can't have no more. I think I was like 12, 13 years old. And she was like, yeah, this is my story. So th- those of you who don't like my stories, go F yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we were playing with the I ran out of money, and I'm fucking telling my mom, give me money, give me money. She's getting annoying. She's like telling me to go fuck off. Vete pa' fuera jugar, vete pa' fuera. And I ain't listening. Mm-hmm. And she gets mad, right? And when she gets mad, she starts fucking saying shit, like enunciating and she starts making this face where she's looking at you like, I'm going to fuck you up. Her eyes are twitching in you. Her eyes are twitching <laughs> and her fucking face is discombobulated. You know what I think of every time I see my mom's face like that? The the new guy? You the know? New <laughs> he does the, the oh, yeah. He does the stare. <laughs> right? So she's doing that shit, fool. And I said, uh, fuck it. I'm going to get my ass whooped already, right? Yeah, it ain't going to hurt. 
Amá, ¿qué tiene? You know, mind you, people, there's a lot of people, they don't know that she's doing this shit to me because they're focused on the lotería shit. Amá, ¿qué tiene? And anybody just automatically looks at her, right? Like her fucking faces look, go straight to her. And she gets even more discombobulated. No, ¿qué pasó, mijo? Amá, la cara la tiene así toda chueca, ma. ¿Por qué eres, te, te has está bien? Dude, my mom gave me the face, like her, like the ex, like her fucking face flipped, like an exorcist, like not the head, the face. Where I was like, I'm gonna fuck you up now. I'm gonna fuck you up. So when I got home, dog, she told my daddy, hey, cuando se mete a la casa, en chinga. And I got my ass beat down. So that was, that's crazy. And then the one I got out of, out of it once was, she was gonna hit me, and she was so mad. And I told her, okay, let's make a deal. Déjame paro en la, en la pared, y yo te digo cuando le a dar las nalgas. <laughs> the and then I was like, she was about to hit me. She's like, what the fuck? So I put myself like a prisoner on the wall. <laughs> and she's about to whoop me. And I said, espérate, espérate, espérate. No estoy listo. <laughs> and she started laughing, fool. And me dice, vete a la chingada, cabrón. I was like, yes. <laughs> Got out of my ass whooping, so. Anyways, that's enough stories it, from me today. Good thing you've never been in prison, doc. <laughs> <laughs> nah, fuck that. He lets him stop and puts his hands wait, up. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, I'm not ready. <laughs> nah, fuck that. That's another story. What? Wait, what? What? No, I'm saying. Oh. Let's hear that story. Let's hear that story. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. Have you ever gotten out of an ass whooping? No, but you know what I would do? You know how um, eye contact is like a thing that you don't do? Like I used to do it on purpose where it was, she would hit me. And I would look her in the eyes and not cry. Like, you're not going to make oh, me you're cry. One of those. Like, you're not going to make me cry. Like, hit me all you want. I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to give you that satisfaction. And she so would I would look again. at her in her eyes and, like, sure, they would get teary, but I wouldn't, like, eh, you know, cry. Like, I'd be, like, looking at her while she's hitting me. You know what I just thought for? How is this a thing? Uh, we're thankful for her mom. We're only talking <laughs> about them whooping her <laughs> you ass. Know, you know what's funny, though? Something she brings up. I was the same way in a sense. When I would do something wrong for, like, she get mad and I would just hold it, but once she went away, stuck right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fool. You well, feel yeah, like, you gotta cry, but later on when they don't see you. I think the biggest thing is not even pain; it was more disappointment. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. It wasn't the pain of what I did or if she kicked my ass or whatever, or whatever happened. But it was more the disappointment, the feeling of disappointment. Did you ever tell your mom no te quiero? No. 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 You? I don't think so. I had. I, I never know. did. I told her no te quiero. Uh, and I didn't know the impact until, you know, I have kids now. When they tell you that shit, you might not show it. You might put up a front. <laughs> okay, let me get us. But as soon as they leave, you're like, ooh. <laughs> so I can just imagine how my mom felt. So, mom, I'm sorry. I know that's not the worst thing I've done. There's a lot of the other worst things that you're not proud of me. But I love you, and I know that you've always been there unconditionally. So I do really love you, and thank you for being there for me. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was I gonna say? Where are we gonna go with this? Uh, we're still on our Mother's Day special, so I know we should stop talking shit, though, right? Yeah, let's, th honestly, let's talk about the how, good things. How, how was CPS not involved? Like, honest, I, there was times where I like I'm. I think one time I did tell her like, I'm gonna call the cops on you. Like, I'm gonna I'm gonna report you for for what you do. And she's like, she grabbed her phone and she's like, Hablales. Oh yeah, she did that. She's like, tell them to come and pick your ass up. She's like, tell them, que te lleven, que se los lleven a todos. My mom, my mom would tell me, ¿le vas a hablar a la policía? <laughs> sí, le voy a hablar a la policía. Háblales. Mm -hmm. just, just the way I'm saying it, háblales. Pero te juro que te mato antes de que lleguen aquí, cabrón. I'll be like, fuck this. <laughs> Here goes the phone. I'm going back to my room. <laughs> Stop at the one. <laughs> okay. My mom, my mom will switch from like soft to fucking te mato. <laughs> no, I ain't calling the cops. Fuck that. One time I think I did. I think I actually pressed 911. And then as soon as they answer, she's in the background. And I'm like, sorry, I, I misdialed. <laughs> <laughs> hey, back then it was easy. You could confuse her with 411. Yeah, yeah. 411, yeah. But I think. The reason why we never went through with that is because unless you were really getting your ass beat, like unless you knew you were in a situation where your your parents are not supposed to be doing something like that, right? You you know the difference between yeah, I need to call the cops, 
or I'm just being a dumbass little kid and threatening my parents. At least for me, because I know that a lot of the shit I warranted, like a lot of the ass beatings, I warranted them from my mom. Now my dad's a different story, and that's a Father's Day special. <laughs> but um, for my mom, at least, I was a bad kid. I mean, fuck, I would have fucked me up back then too. You know what I'm saying? So, would you? One. Are you a? Uh, are you like a discipliner? I'm not a discipliner. <laughs> I think I think everybody knows that. You're a teddy bear. I am. I mean, I talk a lot of shit. I grew up, you know, pretty tough. But I think it's also because my first kids were girls. And even my son, I, I spanked him. I probably spanked him three, four times in his lifespan. And the times that I've spanked him, like, hard, I turned around and cried. Yeah. So it's like, I don't believe in, I don't want to hit my kids like the way I grew up getting hit, especially from my dad's side. I just don't do it. I just I try to talk to them. I try to talk sense into them. I try to negotiate, but it's hard because it's it's not it's not easy. Yeah. So I I, I could only wonder how our parents did it. You know what I'm saying? Like how I don't know it. if you guys agree or not, but do you feel like kids now are not as bad as we were? <laughs> if that makes sense. I think they're worse. You think so? Yeah. I think so. But I think um, in a sense, all that social media has so much to do with it as well. Like these kids are learning everything from there like even from a young age and like i i can't i can't sit here and say my kid doesn't doesn't um i mean because she's five and there there's times where she's like can i watch tiktok and i'm like no you can't watch tiktok and she's like oh okay and she's only five okay so it's like i feel like now kids are growing up a lot faster than when i mean you guys it's different but me like it's they're growing up a lot faster. I had social media, but not the way these kids are. Like, there's middle schoolers talking about sex and, like... Yeah, drugs, food. And drugs. Yeah, I know. And it's, it's like, insane, like... Junior high in high school. Huh? When I was high school, you, you, I don't want to throw kids out there, but there's kids that have been caught with drugs and things yeah. like that, so... Yeah. Junior I, high. I worked at a junior high, and the amount of things that I heard... In a junior high for like seventh graders and eighth graders is insane. Like they had kids with Xanax in school. Like these are twelve year olds. Let, let me ask a question. Do you think it's it has to do? We grew up in. A, we're, 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 I'm, I'm what first generation Chicano. You're first generation Chicano. You're sec. You're third generation technically. Half. Second. Second. That was first. Yeah. That was first. Okay. So you're second on your dad's side, and then your mom. Obviously, she's Mexican, but we grew up listening to what? Tupac, fucking Ice Cube, Snoop Dogg. I don't even think it's the music, though. But if if that's, where, the you're, music, if that's but where you're going with it. Well, it's our, our, the way we grew up, we, we were kind of like, yeah, yeah. We were never gangsters. But you know what it is? I think the kids that we're talking about that have, like, those issues and have, like, drug things and all that, I think it's lack of, like, she's talked about earlier. But is the, there the parents showing, I mean, not all cases, obviously, there's always rare cases, but I think the, it's the environment they're growing up with. We know a lot of people, I think. I don't think it's the parents, bro. <sighs> I don't know. think it's the parents. I think it's the culture that they're, li- that, okay, we all know, we've all been teenagers. There comes a time and point in, in our life where we don't listen to our parents. If he, we didn't yeah. listen to them as five years old. There no. comes a time where, like, my friends are the but, influence. But check it. The, my, my, my thing, yeah, it's obviously the friends, too, the influence. But here's my thing. Our parents, they wouldn't do drugs, smoke weed, do well, none of that. Mm-hmm. Our generation, some of these parents are still doing that stuff. Yeah. Partying, but, forgetting about their kids, thinking they're 21-year-olds. You know what I mean? But Still but acting a certain way. It's not as much. No, nah, I think it's pretty rampant. You don't do that. Like, our generation, no, I know, but. I our, don't do that. No, but. And our, our we kids know are a lot of people. To that shit. We know a lot of people that do. Of course. So I think the kids pick up on that stuff, and they're like, "Hey, it's okay. My parents fucking smoke weed all the time, or hey, my parents always all drinking. Fucking what kind of, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's things, I, little cues they pick up along the way that if it's okay for them to do it at that age. I think I still think that their major influence at this point, like between the ages of eleven and seventeen, are your their peers. I In a sense, think, I still think that the major the major influence is them. I think you could grow up in a nice household, but if you go to school, you're in a different environment, a different, that's, they don't care what you think, they care what they think. What's a parent's role, though? To, get involved. To, yeah, in a sense, but what I'm saying is, you're, educate. we got to teach them, educate them, 
and give them the proper morals and guidelines so when they co- have to make a decision, we hope they make the right decision. But at the end of the day, you're still just a parent compared to yeah, the Yeah, I mean, they're still going to, uh, in a sense, you yeah. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. feel like you still and have to with teach social that. media, it's not just us anymore. It's amplified. Because you, like you said, there's people out there that are grown-ups that are pushing this shit. And let's be honest. Let's be honest. Ever since we grew up to, it's always, you never cater to the adult. You cater to the kid. And what do I mean by that? It's true. The, the, the liquor stores, the reason why the, 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 the signs are low, because kids could see it at eye level. The reason why cigarettes are low you know, you know the advertising back in the day, back in our days, it's because they're at eye level, so it's appealing to kids. Because if you get a kid started at a young age, they grow into adulthood. You don't. A lot of adults don't get addicted to something unless they were used to it or prone to it in the, when they were younger. Yeah, I think that's a whole different subject. Yeah. Yeah. So, again, th- th- that's that's not the. I mean, Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we got a little sidetrack. Um, so yeah, hey, mothers. Go to, how does the song go? Uh, the song go? Dear Mothers Mama? Mothers, take care of your children. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. What is uh, it? No, I don't know. Is that don't Sean, uh, what's, what's it called? Oh, yeah, the, the only mother songs I know is Boys to Men and Tupac. Tupac? Tupac and Boys to Men. Your Mama? To Man. Your mm-hmm. Mama and the Boys to Men. Hey, what's, a good, what's a good Mother's Day song? I know there's a, more out there. Let's sing the Boys to Men, but I know you like to sing. I forgot how it goes, to be honest. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know. The only one I can actually think of that's like a mom song is Dear Mama. Dear Mama? Do you know the lyrics? Some of it, yeah. I mean, when I hear it, I, I'll, I'll know it. But you didn't go to Tupac? Huh? Tupac's out of your range. But it doesn't mean that I don't listen tu- to him. Tupac is eternal, Holmes. Eternal Tupac. He, he's, <laughs> I heard he's still chilling, fool. In Cuba. In Cuba? He's making music. I've heard that supposedly, too. Yeah? Cool. So what are you guys going to do for Mother's Day this week? I mean, this this time around. Well, I don't know. What does your sound guy have planned? Um, why wow. Would the, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. We have a little bit to say. Why would does the sound? Why does the sound guy or sound guy need to take care of you? You're not his mom. Uh, but I'm the mother to yeah, his yeah. child. Hey, where's where, where's uh? I don't want to say names because where's your daughter at? Fool? Tell, ask her what she's gonna do for you. No, that's so ugly, honestly. What? I think that is so ugly. I when I hear something like that, I on uh, I instantly think like mama's boy to the max. To <laughs> the max. I'm sorry. Wow. But I So I didn't know you had a second mom. What? <laughs> sound guy don't wanna say shit. What's up, sound guy? You were talking all that shit the other day. So say something, sound guy. I ain't getting shit. About what? <laughs> so so you they we're just fucking around, fool. Yes, we do get shit for for Mother's Day for our ladies and shit. So, mm-hmm. no, don't come after me. Happy Mother's Day. I don't know. <laughs> um, so I guess he, I don't know what he has planned. So I, we don't, we won't talk about it here. But honestly, that's the thing, though. Like I w- earlier, I was talking about how sick I feel, how shitty I've been feeling. That's a sacrifice that I'm doing, and it's not for a short time of period. It's nine months, nine months, and it's his kid. So why wouldn't it's he cater to me? Why wouldn't he plan something for me? Like, and I'm going to hook you up. I'm going to hook you up. It's not nine months. It's, it's an entire life. Well, there you, but I mean, for, from physically, <laughs> from physically, from my, like in my body, it's nine months. Yeah, hey, I was carrying that baby probably my whole life. Yep. Straight up. For like, what, five minutes? Wow. Really? <laughs> this is going to turn Damn. into a divorce special. Damn, the divorce <laughs> So no, but honestly, that that I don't have to be his mom for him to plan something. You know, I'm raising his kid. I'm having another one of his kids. Like, okay, and guys, we're up, done. Have a good day. <laughs> happy Mother's nah, Day. Nah, happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Cut it off right now. No, I'm just kidding. No, I feel you. I feel. You. I'm just kidding. I was just fucking around with you. <laughs> I just every time I hear it, it's like you're not my mom. It goes both ways though, because when Father's Day comes around, you're gonna say the same thing. Exactly. So exactly. But for me, for Father's Day, uh, because he's a good dad, you know, and because he, I saw him literally grow up into the father that he is today, like, I'm going to cater to him. I'm going to do girls, something special women, for him. Take note. Because he's an amazing dad. Women, take note. Take and he, des- he deserves to be celebrated because we did it young. And, I mean, we're still young and we're still doing it, so... Why wouldn't I want to do that for him? You know, shower him with love and appreciation 
for the father Damn. that he is. Damn, girl, I'm going to go I'm all a, out this Sunday. I'm going <laughs> to shoot a little words of wisdom to you guys, though. What's up? I'm not big on days as it is normally, right? Uh -huh. But I think certain things, you know, especially as we've gotten older, you realize a couple of things. Shouldn't be about every day. You know, every day if you see your mother, give her that hug. Tell her you love Definitely. her. Definitely. And fathers, same thing. You know, just loved ones in general. Then you just got to appreciate them every day, not just once a year, because you never know. That's true. That's that true. is very true, too. So. Well, I think we're coming close to, are, to uh, are we, show. Are we going to do a words of wisdom with her? Even though she's co-host? <laughs> yeah, I think she should, she should say something. Do you have any words of wisdom for the podcast listeners? Or for mothers? <laughs> it is a Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day. Um, I think my words of wisdom will be, don't make any decisions based on fear. Okay. Um, I think when you have that little voice in your head that tells you you can't do something, it definitely holds you back. But if you make a decision based on, like, I can do this, um, there's nothing holding me back, and you have that confidence within yourself, you can put your mind almost to anything and make it possible for yourself. Like if it's something you really want to do and you're passionate about it and you put your mind into it, you'll achieve it. Cool. Nice. This is our first co-host mm -hmm. of many. And he wanted to be a special for Mother's Day. Obviously, Sound Guy's wife came. <laughs> We call him Sound Guy. That's that's what we call him. <laughs> he was gonna have a camera, but the, we are ha having technical difficulties. Uh, so I got a know. I got a little thing before. What's up? Let's do a little Mother's Day no manches. Okay. To just a quick little no manches about our moms. All right. <laughs> or something that they did that was like no manches. All right, go for it. You started off. Me? Yeah. Shit. Okay. Let me see. You caught me off guard with that, huh? You don't want to put it up. <laughs> Damn. Okay, my no manches was uh, my mom always told me. She always told me to stand up for myself, right? Not not to pick fights, but stand up for myself. My no, her no manches. Well, my no manches is that she would always tell me, "Don't start the fight, but finish it." And if you get your ass beat, yeah. I'm gonna beat your ass. So essentially, your mom said that. Yeah, so I have to win the fight. If I would lose a fight, she would beat my ass too. I was like, no manches. <laughs> you can't <laughs> win them all. <laughs> yeah, I'm also surprised your mom said that, bro, because normally my dad would say that shit to me. Yeah? My mom would be like, don't get in the fight, but defiante. That, no, that was my mom. No, yeah. yeah, that was my mom, too. When I got in my first fight, and I had to call her from the principal's office to did come and win? tell her. Uh, no, I'm saying that's, it, the, that's what she asked you, right? Did you win? No, yeah, yeah. So when I called her, she's like, ay, tita. She's like, ¿y qué pasó? She's like, ya, ya sabes que te, te había dicho que si, si te vas a pelear y no te la chingaste, she's like, yo te voy a chingar a ti. <laughs> she's like, so que voy a ver cuando llego. And I'm just like, oh. Yeah, I had to hide one time when I got jumped and shit. I had to hide, like, outside of our wall. Because I had, like, black eye and shit. I was just chilling. I was, like, hoping it would go down. Who did you fight? <laughs> huh? Who did you fight? I, I got jumped. Wait, who? Leaving now when? When? A long time ago, huh? Is that elementary? Yeah. It's not the time with Alex, was it? No, no, no. Because okay, I was a one on one. I was there. Dang. Yeah, but he caught me off guard too on that one too. <laughs> and then remember, remember when I jumped in with for you with Il, with Ilo? Me and Ilio? Yeah, Ilio. There you go. Yeah. Like, fuck, I don't remember. You had to jump in, dang. Hey, I take your ass. Bro, <laughs> hey, I was always feisty, fool. You know I didn't, I didn't back down. Oh, he's no feisty. <laughs> I was always feisty. I was. Anyways, do you have a no manches? I got a no with manches. All right, guys. So. A big no matches for me, mothers wise, is moms that still act and this is more for you, Cisco. <laughs> that like their their son is still a little boy. And you know what I mean? Like my yeah. mom and, and I'm speaking for me, I was saying Cisco because we he's a big mama's boy. Um like when I went to the military, right? I was in the military, I was nineteen, twenty, even, I think all the way up to twenty two, twenty three, because I told my mom to stop. My mom would call me all the fucking time. But she still don't stop, huh? Like, essentially, they're still... Now my mom, she stopped. I think it's more because we're, like, the older ones, too. And we're, like, the more... Obviously, for example, right now, your dad's around. But if your dad... Who's going to be, like, the main... Mm, yeah, true. But I think my mom stopped because I made a point to, like, hey, you need to stop. Like, I'm not a damn little boy. I don't, 
I got married. I got three wives. You know, I got three, <laughs> three wives. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, hey, Mom, I'm fucking married. I'm fucking. I'm a man. You? I'm a man. <laughs> I'm a man, I'm a ma. <laughs> I'm a ma. I'm a ma. But me haces pollo con mole, ma. Because my mom's pollo con mole is the shit. Um, so I told her, like, my mom, I, was, I was like 25. And my mom would call me and shit, right? On this task. Then you say you got and I'm like, Ma, what the fuck? I'm not a little boy. Like, I'm a I'm a old man. Like and I remember one time <laughs> uh well many times I would come home from the club when we used to go clubbing and shit. Remember back in the day? And my mom would always wait up for me. Now mind you, I didn't live with her. I'd come from Camp Pendleton or where I was stationed at or whatever. And I would drive all the way to her house in Baldwin Park. And then from there we go clubbing. I stayed the weekend because the homies were lived in Baldwin Park. And she'd always stay up for me. And, but she would always stay up for me to see if I got home safe. But she would always talk shit because I would come home drunk. <laughs> and one time I said, fuck this. I ain't, I ain't going inside the house. I don't, want, I don't feel like listening. So I just slept in my navy, right? I parked the navy on the side of the house. And I went to the back seat and I knocked out drunk. And the next morning I wake up to pounding on the window. <laughs> and it's my mom, dog. It's my mom going... She didn't even say shit. She just looks at me. She goes, to get inside the house. But I'm still, you know, when you wake up bucking, buzzing and still, like when you're like, fuck, I'm still drunk. I just get out the car like a little, like a little puppy, like a sad puppy. <laughs> Go inside the room and just knock out and I just hear my mom talking shit. So no manches, ladies. Your son becomes a man at some age. Let him do his shit. <laughs> don't fucking, don't be baby. No, that's my no manches. Mm. Can I say one while she thinks? Sure. Go for it. The little fucking leash backpacks. What the fuck are you doing <laughs> with that shit? <laughs> Those still around? Yeah. Bro, like, every time I see them, I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, you got to fucking walk your kid like that? Like, the hey. moment you have a kid that runs off, <laughs> yeah, then you'll true. know. Like, it's, yeah. it's not about keeping them on a leash. <laughs> it's about safety. Like, sometimes these little shits just fucking run off and... My my no matches when the moms call their kids little shits. <laughs> <laughs> I think moms have, moms can do that. If you're mm. a mom, you could do that because they do it with love. Little shit is yeah, little true. love. It's a lovey dovey nickname. <laughs> yeah, little yeah. shit. <laughs> yeah, I, I I agree with you, some guy. I yeah. agree with you. I, I, it makes them look like little dogs. So, no manches. Since you don't have a no manches, we're gonna break it off. I know uh, we're gonna close it off with. I got a movie recommendation for you moms. If you haven't seen it, it's fucking hilarious. And only, I think, only parents, specifically moms, will understand the movie. So if you're a parent... Is it the one with Mila Kunis? Yeah, Bad Moms. Bad Moms. Oh. Watch that movie. Know, say what funny. to expect when expecting. <laughs> I haven't seen that one, but Bad Moms, like, you can't... Like, that's the movie that will make you feel like, yes... Yes, that's what we go through. Yes, and, I'm, and, I'm not saying and, and Mike is a rom com type of guy. <laughs> I am a rom com type of guy. I am. I am. I do like uh, romantic comedy. So that one's a good movie. Yeah, bad moms. It shows um, all the perspectives of like a overprotective mom, a mom who's like half-assing it, doing her best, and you know, like because yeah. there, there's so many different moms. Exactly. There, it's not just one way of how you can raise a kid. And it got to my. My, and there's uh, a movie, pros and cons to it. My movie it wifey, Mila Kunis. Oh, yeah. I've been in love with her since she was on the 70s show. Did she you see that they're making a 90s show? Yeah, uh, I saw that. That's it's crazy. the same people, right? Yeah. yeah. Except, you know, Hyde. Oh, yeah. Because of his whole scandal. Yeah. Yeah. Is I loved him. No, no. I don't think he's in jail yet. But... He is in prison. Oh, yes? He oh, he's in prison. Yeah, because it wasn't like doing... Like, he got kicked off sexual of... sexual assault. Yeah. Yeah. He got kicked out of the the ranch. Gotcha. With Russian Kutcher. So... But anyways... Guys, I think I speak for all of us when I say, you know, we've been lucky and blessed to have amazing women in our lives in every aspect. And we want to thank the mothers out there. Happy Mother's Day. Uh, we love you all and keep being great role models and parents for your kids. And happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you. Mom, Mom I love you. P.O.P. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for having me, guys. I appreciate it. <laughs> all, right. all right, guys. You guys have a good weekend. Happy Mother's Day. All right.